He's known as much for his altruism as his tourism business success here in Central Florida. Today on Central Florida Spotlight, hotelier and philanthropist Harris Rosen talks about his latest effort to fund brain cancer research. Hi, folks, and welcome to this week's Central Florida Spotlight. Here again with Harris Rosen, founder, president, and chief operating officer of Rosen Hotels and Resorts, and a familiar face on this show from the past years. Welcome. I know that uh, you come with a heavy heart. Uh, the passing of your son, first of all, condolences. I know it's been difficult for you and for your family these last two and a half years. Terrible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, Greg. It's been, I think, it would be appropriate for me to say it's been the worst two and a half years of my life. And uh, I've lived a long life. And of course, there are always ups and downs. But to lose a son, to lose a child is uh, horrible beyond words. And it came as such a shock because Adam was so incredibly fit. Uh, all of my kids were athletic, mm -hmm. like, like yours. And suddenly I received a, a phone call from his trainer. He um, works out every day. And uh, his trainer said, Harris says something wrong. Um, and he explained what he thought was, was wrong. And, what he thought the cause might be. He mentioned something called Bell's palsy as a mm. possible reason for uh, Adam's difficulties. He said he would recommend a, an MRI, and so I took Adam. And um, we got a call from our medical center, and Adam and I went, and the, the news, of course, was awful. But we we had to had it had to have it confirmed. So I knew some folks at University of Florida, Shands, and we went there. And Dr. Friedman did a biopsy and confirmed uh, that it was a, a form of brain cancer, an anaplastic astrocytoma, which is a rather rare form, a like glioblastoma. Mm. And uh, the fact that he survived for two and a half years was really uh, uh, quite something. But it's just awful. And I don't think it's something that a parent ever gets over. Um, I don't think I've had a good night's sleep in the two and a half years. It's, it's just been a very, very difficult time. And yet, you're going to take some of your wealth and put it towards efforts to help other people who get this just horrific news. They're uh, at the University of Florida. They received a $12 million gift from um, you and your foundation to help with innovative brain tumor immunotherapy research. Talk more about that and why have you focused your monies towards that? Um, um I thought the physicians at Shands and the Brain Cancer Institute really worked so hard and really cared so much for Adam that when he passed, I asked Dr. Mitchell, who was head of the Brain Cancer Institute there, if there was any way that I could help. and and say thank you for everything that they had done. And he said, well, uh, your, your timing is really perfect. And he explained to me that the University of Florida Cancer Institute was going to um, create a new initiative where instead of universities and labs working independently and essentially competing with each other, mm -hmm to be the first out of the box, they would create a collaborative initiative where they would work together, where they would share their experiences. And An open book. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that c 
competition in, in a free entrepreneurial society is really important. But in medicine, is it really the best alternative? What if everybody works together? Wouldn't that expedite the ability to find a treatment or a cure? And so that intrigued me so. And I said to myself, why not do something that Adam would be proud of? Well, I'm sure he is. We're going to talk more about that, take a quick break. I want to get further into that collaboration okay. and making certain that Adam's name lives on and that his uh, loss is a gain for others. We'll be right back with Harris Rosen to talk more about his latest philanthropic effort and find out why this donation in particular has a personal meaning for he and his family and what it may mean to you and your family next. Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight here again with hotelier and philanthropist Harris Rosen. Thanks again for being here on what is an emotional time. We typically bring you in to talk about the health of tourism. Now we're talking about the, the health and the decline of your son because cancer really sees no boundaries, is not prejudicial towards one set of people, one set of right. finances. You're a wealthy man. You could throw as much money at his sickness as possible, and yet cancer still in this instance one and I know when we talked before when he was sick you were even thinking about therapies that might exist across the world right. it had to be frustrating for you that even though you were blessed with this money and the success you couldn't fix this yeah, very frustrating but I think where we were was probably one of the best alternatives and they really did a fine job and and when Adam passed and I had an opportunity to spend time with Dr. Mitchell, who heads the Brain Cancer Institute. He was talking about this new initiative, and I was really quite intrigued. And the more we spoke, the more intrigued I became. And then finally, I said, is it possible for me to help in any way? And mm -hmm. he smiled, and he said, of course. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that they had a goal over 10 years, they wanted to raise $100 million. And so I sat down with my financial guy and we determined that I would give a million dollars a year for the next 10 years. Well, some folks heard about that and one in particular, a fellow named Craig Mateer, uh, who had bags and sold it recently he called and he said, Harris, um, I'd like to help. And I said, wow, Craig, that's wonderful. Not anticipating anything in particular. And he said, I'd like to give $2 million. So together, we're providing $12 million over 10 years. Mm. Um, and and what, what is so pleasing is that my contribution has encouraged others to hop on board also. What makes this so different is that there'll be 12 universities working in collaboration. Right. So they actually call it a collaborative initiative. And it will unite these world-leading neuro-oncology physicians, scientists, exactly. dynamic research, clinical trials as well. Right. And your gifts were announced just this past week at the inaugural remission summit for brain tumors out at uh, Rosen Shingle Creek. At the creek, that's right, it was. And um, I, I was asked to say a few words and I did with some difficulty. And people were, I think, very pleased with what, what, I, what I had to say. Um, and You've now, really built a team here is what I think is interesting. You know, you have a sports background. We talked about that a little that's bit. Right. And so what you've done, is you said, let's not work as individuals. Right. Let's be a team and take the smartest and most brilliant and innovative minds in the world and work together right. as one. And that's what you've done here. Well, I... I, I You're I, part I, of. I, that, that's right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I can't certainly can't take credit for it, but I think Dr. Dr. Mitchell was the one who said it was time to change um, the, the format. And instead of having all of these 
universities and labs working independently, well, listen, which has brought great success over the century, why not accelerate the process and let's work together? How welcoming are they to that? Because medicine is a business. Medicine is a business, but medicine is different. Okay. Operating a hotel, we're not talking about potentially saving lives. Mm -hmm. In medicine, we're talking about saving lives. And that's a whole different paradigm. And so they have to, in my opinion, create a different standard. Unfortunately, Adam succumbed to this terrible disease, brain cancer, but this would be the greatest gift that he would give to mankind because it, it initiated this, uh, this insight by you. You know, I want to believe in my heart of hearts that Adam is aware of what we're doing. He would be so incredibly proud because the clinic and the two labs, the neuro-oncology labs and the neuromedicine clinic will be named the Adam Michael Rosen Clinic and Lab. Mm. And if indeed we are blessed with a successful treatment or cure, Adam will look down at his dad and say, thank you so much, dad, God bless you, and you've made me so proud. We're gonna continue with uh, Harris Rosen. Coming up, we'll talk more about this, plus business. How are we doing in terms of tourism? One of our most influential leaders. We'll talk about that and more next. Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight. Here again with Harris Rosen, the founder of Rosen Hotels and Resorts. We have been talking about some very emotional, uh, close to home moments that impacted you and your wife and, and your other children with the passing of Adam, the pictures of him that um, I have seen. What a beautiful, healthy young man. You talked, I don't wanna go back into that. It's too emotional to go back into that. But I think the lesson here for all of us is that if it can happen to you and someone with your wealth and resources, cancer is just so, so powerful that it's in all of our best interest to do what we can to help because it can happen to any of us. And let me share this with you while I'm thinking of it. Runway to Hope, a wonderful, wonderful organization. Mark Nijam and his wife. They do a great job. Um, and we're thinking now of joining mm -hmm. together um, because the Adam Michael Rosen Foundation, which is separate from what Dad is doing, uh, will focus laser-like on cancer here in Central Florida. And working with Runway will provide a wonderful combination of resources. So we're looking forward to working with Mark um, in, in this collaboration uh, of Adam Michael Rosen and Runway to Hope. Uh, what I'm doing at, at the University of Florida will have um, impact nationwide and worldwide. You've made such a financial commitment to uh, the, the wealth and health of your uh, employees. How successful has that been? Has there been any nibbles from others to do the same thing? It's, it's been incredibly successful and we've been doing it now for 26 years, way before healthcare uh, became a, a topic of interest. Um, if you compare our cost per individual, they refer to it as cost per covered life, mm -hmm with the national average cost per covered life, in the last 26 years, we've saved close to $400 million. My goodness. And so we've spoken, Greg, to any number of individuals uh, in the public sector, private sector. And r last year, we went to the World Health Care Congress and the recipient of three awards, um, worldwide awards. And so word was kind of seeping out and people were now calling and, and it is now possible that we'll create a whole new company that will dedicate itself to helping others create their own health care plan. Um, Do you feel like, Harris, that the success of the day that 
you bought that small hotel on I Drive, lived in there, still your office and <laughs> right. still one of the rooms, the joining rooms. Right. Do you feel like the success that you experienced through hard work, but was for this bigger cause, for this bigger um, idea to help so many others, not just with their workplace health, but just in general? Do you feel like, okay, now it makes sense why I was blessed with making the right decisions? Let me tell you this. Um, That's a pretty philosophical question, but... No, I, I think often about the blessings I've received. Your grandparents from Eastern Europe growing up on the Lower East Side, right near the Bowery. First one to go to college. First one to serve in the military as an officer. Here I am today. No, God didn't intend my success to create wealth. He had another purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're doing now. That's what we're experiencing right I, now. I do believe that in my it heart. It feels that way. It does. Fantastic. We're going to talk more about that. I didn't touch on tourism yet. <laughs> so we have all what, these great entrepreneurs. What, what is tourism? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way you're funding all your great uh, you're right, philanthropic you're right. things right. that you've got going on. Thank you. We'll continue in our final segment with the man to my left, Harris Rosen. Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight here again with Harris Rosen. Again, thank you for giving up so much of your time and your emotion and your energy. But uh, to dig deep and to talk about some of these issues I know has been difficult. Something that hits all of us, of course, is health care. Uh, caring for uh, loved ones is always difficult. What you've done within the community, helping with education. What about the health of our main economic driver, and that is tourism? It seems like we're doing well. You can't get up and down I-4 without being in a traffic jam at any time of the day, any day of the week. By the way, that was a very interesting segue between health and the health of tourism. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pay professional. <laughs> I think tourism is pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think we're, we're, we're all doing well. Uh, I think what has gotten us even a little bit more motivated is the wonderful expansion that is going to happen at the convention center, about 400, 450,000 feet. And you will expand space. as well. Yeah, well, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know about it. Yeah. <laughs> You've been eavesdropping. Yes. Um, so so I, I, I think that the expansion of the convention center certainly is, is going to help tremendously. Um, and, and we'll be able to expand our, our market for uh, meetings and, and conferences. You aren't one that believes in taking out loans. You believe in paying for things. Talk about that. I mean, Dave Ramsey's made a, uh, an empire out of talking about get out of debt, but, but explain why you did it that way. Um, grew up in the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. um, my two granddads, Zadies, um, mm -hmm. left Eastern Europe and settled there and were hundreds of thousands of immigrants. And I'm sitting there um, one day with one of my Zadies and with very thick Eastern European accent, he says, uh, Herschel, Harris, um, you're going to be a very successful businessman. You have something very special in your genes. I had no idea what he was talking about. But your Zadie lost everything during the Depression mm. because I had mortgages I had to pay. So, boy, chick, don't ever borrow money. I go to bed that night. Mom tucked me and my brother in bed. Mom says, Harris, why aren't you wearing your pajamas? Why do you have your jeans on? I said, because my Zadie said that I had something very special in my jeans. <laughs> she says, no, Harris, different kind of jeans. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning. Now, when I purchased my first little motel, I wrote a check for $20,000, which was all the money I had in the world, and I assumed a mortgage. I had no idea what assuming a mortgage was, but it was two and a half million dollars. When I found out, I went into my office, my new office, and I started to cry. I said, what have I just done? 
So as the years have gone by, I've paid my debt off. And about 10 years ago, we were completely debt free. Now that's an anomaly. Some people would say it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's Meshuggah. Why? And so God's all of your hotels, all of that is all. No debt. No debt. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it enables us to do things that we would not have be able to do if we had a mortgage. And you'd mentioned before about expansion plans for us. Yes, we, we do plan to expand Shingle Creek and we do plan to expand Rosen Center. Um, but we'll wait until we have enough money in our piggy bank to do it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do it. Feeling so confident that we have done the right thing and that our risk has been minimized dramatically by not having any debt. As you look for 2020 and beyond, how does our transportation hold up to uh, what at any given time is basically the population of Atlanta visiting us every single day of the week? How do we do it? Is there an answer or are we just basically putting a Band-Aid over this? Well, right now I think we're putting a Band-Aid over it. But my hope is that we'll focus laser-like on transportation as a really very, very important issue. What I would love to see is for a transportation system going to Orlando International Airport, to International Drive and from International Drive to there, that would help tremendously. I mean, just think of uh, the impact, it would, the positive impact it would have on I-4. And I, we're working towards that. And, and I think Mr. Kruppenbacher and, and those of us in industry are, are engaged in, in conversations about the, the possibility of having some sort of a light rail some transportation system from International Drive to the airport. Well, thank you for spending so much quality time with us. We appreciate it. We have an open door policy anytime you want to come in. I know you're busy, but there's so much more I want to talk about. Thank you so but much. But we, we did touch on some very important Thanks, issues. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Harris Rosen, with us today. And on that note, we will wrap up this week's edition of Central Florida Spotlight. Again, thanks to Harris Rosen for giving so much of his quality time and his insights today. Hopefully, we've all grown from that and learned a lot. And thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another edition of Central Florida Spotlight. Until then, have a great remainder of your weekend and take care.